Yo, what's up, guys? Welcome back to the World Series of Sealed, live from the Esports Arena in Santa Ana, California. My name is Frodan, and uh, I'm once again joined by Luke from Esports Arena as well. Hey. Uh, where we are going to be bringing to you guys another match in round number three. And I'm looking forward to see if uh, some players can avoid elimination. We just saw our first person taken out. It was Trump. Uh, are we going to be able to see whether or not another player gets eliminated, or one will finally fight for his life and keep it kicking? Because one of the things that's really cool is seeing it a comeback run, right? Someone getting down to the last. He's all in and just keeps playing, keeps playing, and it makes the, makes the comeback. Yeah, we're going to have um, VLPS versus Firebat. Now, VLPS is going to have to go all in, mm -hmm. which means he's kind of the same situation that Trump was in. He did double fold the previous round, which is going to allow him to go in with 400 uh, gold. Yep. Um, that means that Firebat also has to go in with maximum 400 because that's sure. all he has. So if VLPS wins, he'll be able to double his cat or gold and go up to 800. But if uh, Firebat wins, then he'll gain the four additional 400 and push VLPS to be the fifth place runner-up. And uh, that's going to make it easier for the competition winding down. As right. we start getting to less players, we start having the prize money rank, uh, rack up a little bit more aggressively. I think the first place gets 3K around there. Yep. Uh, and then it kind of brackets down from like 1K to second place and so on and so forth. So let's take a look at how the drafts have actually panned out. Uh, we're going to take a look at Firebat first. He is a person that was not exactly the happiest with how his cards lined up previous drafts. He was right. saying that he felt like he got some pretty bad cards overall. Let's see this time if he's got some good stuff. Yeah, definitely. Just so you guys know exactly how it works, we're going to watch the cards flip over. After we see all the cards, we're going to go straight to how his decks ended out. So we're not going to mm. have to watch the entire draft. Uh, strictly the card flipping and then the end result. So, um, But Car so far, pretty good. Yeah, card flipping is like half. It's all the fun. It's, <laughs> it's not. It's it's like yeah, ninety eight yeah. percent of the fun. But all right, we'll take it. Yeah. Uh, uh, there's some cards already sticking out immediately as being powerful ones. Flame Strike being one of them. Oh, yeah. um, you, you know, the fact that he has two Holy Novas and a Shadow or Death removal is not exactly the easiest to come by. So I feel like there is some good foundation here already for Firebat. Yeah, I see a couple of good cards I'm taking a look at as well. A lot of good rogue cards. I know Firebat was talking about how the last rogue deck he. Uh, drafted. He only had two spells, which is Shadow Step and a Sap. We already see two Fan of Knives, a Sap, um, a Sinister Strike, and a Deadly Poison, and I believe we saw a couple other ones as well. Mm -hmm. So, not too shabby, and uh, the other one is Hunter. I see Animal Companions, Trackings, you know, seems pretty decent on both sides. Wow, some really powerful cards. You got got two epics in that pack, an Ancient of Lore. He just got picked up a Druid Call. He also has a Pyroblast. There's okay. there's definitely a lot to work with in Firebatch Draft, just from the classic set alone. Feels like he's got some valuable cards. Don't really discount the fact that um, you know Firebat's really flexible with clash choices, and he's good with all kinds of styles of decks. Right. I think a lot of P players they tend to gravitate towards one style, like control or mid range or aggro, but Firebat's capable of playing all of them. It looks like he did end up finding about two Belchers so far, I think we've seen. I don't know if you saw Raynad's second draft, but he has like seven Belchers. Oh, man. He has at least six. I'm assuming there's more. That's pretty insane. Um, but ooh, Flame Cannon and Dark Bomb. Pretty good packs actually coming out from Firebat. I'm sure he's pretty happy so far taking a look at these. Double Implosion as well. Warlock's looking strong. I know we saw some Doom Guards and Void Walkers. Yeah, Could absolutely. Come up maybe like a mid rangey zoo kind of thing. So the legendaries haven't been exactly uh, game defining. He had Galvin Mechatoric. Oh, Volusion's pretty nice. Well, that like, was good. Another yeah. reason to maybe play Priest. He also has the Flame, Flame Leviathan, Leviathan right. which is uh, that's suspect to say the least. Yeah, let's not say it's a good card, but hey, yeah, we did see Sea Reaver today, so maybe we'll see some Flame Leviathan too. Would be kind of cool. Okay, we got the Flame Waker. I feel like, oh man, Resurrect. I mean, I don't know. Maybe we'll see some Priest. I'm kind of excited. Because someone picked Priest earlier, but they didn't play it. So, did uh, they? Well, Trump did play Priest. Oh, he did play he Priest. He ended up right. playing Priest in his uh, second series. Oh, that's right. Before he was unceremoniously eliminated, unfortunately. <laughs> We're now in TGT. TGT definitely has some high-impact class-specific cards. Their neutral cards are a little bit on the weaker side. Well, Miscall wasn't exactly what I was referring to, but I was talking more about like that. Thunderbluff Valiant uh, right. being pretty good. Buccaneer also Northshire Kraken's always a good one to have in this. <laughs> sure, sure. And we're moving on to the League of Explorers here, final ones. Yeah. yeah if he's going like to play Peddler or Warlock, he definitely wants Peddlers. Uh, yeah. It's a very strong card. Right now, I would I would not be surprised at all if we saw him come out with probably, my guesses would be probably Warlock. Um, his Mage seems really strong. And the third deck could really go any way, but I, I could see Priest. Yeah, Priest feels reasonable. Um, I'm not really, I, I actually don't remember if he has any good druid cards outside of the ones we saw 
I remember he did see a Savage Roar. Uh, looks like we're, we're scrolling through it. A lot of good stuff. Oh, he's got three arm bark protectors. Uh, so there is a possibility for Druid to come out as well if he wants to play a really slow uh, version of deck with he's got ramp and heavy hitting taunt minions. Right. Um, so I, w I wouldn't be I wouldn't be opposed to that either. Yeah, I mean, he could go a lot of different ways with the, the different cards that he ended up pulling there. A lot of good, powerful cards across all the classes. So yeah. we'll, we'll, let's take a look to see really where he ended up. Because um, we have the end result, and it looks like he went Hunter Mage Warlock. So I was huh, interesting. Two for three. So the Hunter doesn't exactly have a lot of class cards. It's primarily neutral if you see the, the card distribution. I think the ones that he really valued were uh, some of the, the, the cards like Scavenging, Hanging, Animal Companion, Power Shot. Uh, those are like the beast that really synergizes with it. And look at, check this out. Firebat decided to play Starving Buzzard. So, okay, you know what? After a further analysis, I think this is just a troll deck. I think he funneled all of his uh, powerful cards I'm into Mage and Warlock. I'm going to have to agree with you because I'm like, I, I was uh, kind of seeing where you were going with it, but I can't, I can't really say that this deck has any potential of being played, um, especially after looking at the other two. Like, let's take a look at the Mage deck, for example. Yeah. Um, he went kind of for a, a, a mechish style of Mage with a decent amount of just powerful cards in general, like the... Uh, the Interior Conjurer, as well as the uh, we have the Flame Strike, and even a Pyroblast in there too. So I think he's trying to go a little bit more aggressive with this list. Yeah, when the Pyroblast makes a lot of sense with Flame Strike. Those are two really strong spells that can uh, f help you finish the game right. uh, or come back onto the board. I also am looking for other mech synergies. Goblin Blast Mage is most notably missing from the mech deck. Right. And I think that's why he scaled back. You know, he doesn't really have like all in on just mechs. Sometimes you have to play suboptimal mechs just so you can have more synergy and chances for Tinker Tower Condition to land on. But there's no there's no uh, Clockwork Gnome, for example, which often is one of these really weak cards, but also can help you snowball the board. Yeah, as far as mechs go, I think we only see about four mechs? Or five mechs, I guess, and then we have a three or four mech synergies. So it seems a little bit off scale. Um, if he does manage to pull the synergies off, though, this deck seems really strong. Yeah, there's like five or six mechs in this deck. Force tank max. Of oh, I skipped force tank max. Uh, it's like a, no one really pays attention to eight mana mechs. Um, so it's totally understandable. <clears throat> Look at the warlock. Seems to, is like he's got a lot of the core cards, which is important. Implosion, dark peddler, hellfire dark having bombs. premium AOE. Dark Bombs being good. Um, I, I could have sworn we saw two Dark Bombs. Maybe not. Uh, I can't imagine him not I, putting two in if he had them. Yeah. So we'll assume we only saw one. Especially since he has, like, Drain Life. He has a lot of removal cards in this list, if you can... Drain almost Life. <laughs> you, you AKA you a like Shield a Slam. A <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> when you are a Shield Slam. It's, um, it's, it's interesting because he's got some cards that I'm, I'm looking at, like Brand Bronzebeard, and trying to mediate immediately a picture what are some of the synergies dark peddler being one of them very 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 strong he actually has a lot because you have, have the north sea kraken we have the gelbin mechator can't forget that one that one's a good one bomb lobber antique heal bot refreshment vendor um yeah earth ring and flame juggler so not yeah. too bad lots of good stuff here i like brandon this deck oh and dread infernal yeah yeah, yeah sure yeah dread infernal definitely it's not something that like screams like oh that's amazing but, you know, two damage AoE on the board, like, uh, Baron getting status might be pretty good. It's so true. it's just, like, something that I didn't think about immediately. Right. Seems a little weird, but, I mean, the brand in this deck, I think, fits fairly well. Uh, we haven't seen too many defenders today, unfortunately, because that's one of the main um, main synergies you see with defender. I mean, with brand bronze beard. But overall, I think these decks seem pretty strong. I definitely yeah, don't mage, think he had a bad one. The Mage and the Warlock will be the two heavy lifters. Uh, you know, I'm taking one last glimpse at the, the Hunter, and it feels like... Ball of spiders, dude. It, it feels like after Firebat built the mana slots from 1 to 4, he just randomly finished 5 to 8. Because <laughs> 1 to 4 is... Ac uh, okay, outside of Stable Master. But, like, 1 to 4 is still kind of reasonable at that point. Because, yeah. like, okay, you're playing, like, early game Curve, Desert Camp. Yeah, I saw you going through it, like, beast. by the ones. And, and then it's, like, Dark Scale Healer. <laughs> Ball of Spiders. Champion. I'm like, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> okay, funny it. guy. <laughs> I get it. Uh, yeah, so that's pretty interesting. I think his deck seemed fairly strong. And he's going to be matching up against VLPS. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I don't know if we have... Oh, there they yep. are. Uh, we just have his decks finished as well. He's going with Druid Warrior Shaman. I like it. Three different classes. Yeah, so we have the Druid deck here. Let's go over this one first. Seems like he has a lot of class cards, which is one of the things we look at in the very beginning. We got a Raven Idol and really strong w turn one. 
Like Raven Idol, Double Chow, and a, and a Gajasan Jouster. Hypothetically, a third Zamba Chow. Yeah. Because he's got Volcanic Lumber, Force Tank Max as his top end. Yeah, and if you're running, if you're running three pretty strong one drops, the Mark of the Wild could get some really good value early game. Yeah, it's a great observation. The you no know, no innervates to help smooth the curve, but maybe he can get that from uh, Raven Idol, and maybe he doesn't need it if he has Wild Growth. I yeah. like the mind control tech. It seems like this deck will fall behind on board eventually because it's got a limited number of two mana drops, um, and it's also playing slower cards like Starfire. Starfire is one of these really really clunky cards because oftentimes, you know, you want to be playing Starfire, but you also want to develop a minion. You usually can't choose both. Yeah, we do see a couple of really strong cards as well, noticeable Lotheb and Drew to Claw. Uh, really strong five drops that he ended up getting there, and double Belcher as well. So um, overall, I feel like his his Druid deck's looking really strong. Pretty pretty decent all around for sure. Keeper of the Grove also one of those sleeper oh, yeah. Yeah, core foundation cards. Warriors are a deck that VLP. I mean, it's a class that VLPS loves. And last time we saw him build a cool Grim Patron deck, this time he he's back with kind of the same, except. You know, he doesn't have a second Patreon. He doesn't exactly have Dr. Boom. He's got War Golem. But he does uh, have two Death Spites. He does have two Death Spites, but I, I, would, I wouldn't be hard-pressed to say that. He's, he's keeping this one most likely on the back burner. Uh, I'd be pretty surprised if he ends up just going for it because it's, it's considerably weaker. Although, we haven't taken a look at the Shaman deck. Maybe that ends up being, uh, maybe that ends up being the joke deck. It very well could be. The Shaman deck itself looks like a very, very aggressive list. Um, unfortunately, he didn't end up pulling... Um, looks like no Doom Hammers. He does have a Rock Biter. I mean, it looks decent. Little little Murloc synergies we can tell in there. Oh, I hope he man. plays this. I really he's got, do. He's got everything is awesome. Oh, man. So, so the big problem with... Murloc Shaman decks is that the quality of your cards are so bad, like Grimscale Oracle. If you fall behind, you're done. That it's just, you know, you, you, sometimes you don't get anything, everything is awesome, and sometimes you just fall so far behind because you're playing 1 1s at the 3 2s. So I'm guessing that VLPS is going more with the, the Warrior um, and the Druid. But maybe we'll be surprised. I mean, we could be sleeping on the Shaman, and all of a sudden it just destroys people because it curves really well, and then. You know, Sir Finley gets life tap, and all of a sudden everything's okay. Everything's That's great. That's true. I mean, this Shaman deck, it, it very well could just take off early game and then just never never give your opponent a, a chance to catch up, especially in a format like Sealed where your opponent's deck might not be necessarily um, created to stop aggression. They don't expect decks like this because we haven't seen a lot of massive aggressive decks today. Most of the decks have been fairly mid-ranged. Yeah, we have seen some aggressive decks. The hunter yeah. decks oh, that's true. Uh, have been like really one one mana minion centric. Um, we also saw five that's rogue deck, oh, yeah. which was super aggressive as well. But there have been a lot of control. Decks. I mean, Trump, of course, is a very notable control player. It's probably not uh, a good example. That's definitely what he favors <laughs> more. Uh, but when you look at guys like Fireback, he loves to be aggressive. I, I, I like I like having an aggressive deck thrown into the mix because it really puts people on the edge, and sometimes people. They don't have a very like one. One of the big things about these kinds of decks in sealed is that you don't get the perfect removal options a lot of times. And so if you can That's find true. a way to craft an aggressive deck, and they don't have the right answer, like instead of fiery war axe, they have a king's defender. They're just a turn late, and then all of a sudden you just run away with the board and just kill them, even if it's a little bit suboptimal on your end. Yeah, a couple of noticeable cards missing from this aggressive shaman deck could be uh, feral spirits. We don't see any of those, unfortunately. Um, that's one of the main. Um, Shaman cards that we see a lot. We do see one crackle and one lava burst, and then no doom hammer. So that's probably as far as aggression goes. And I feel like Veal, uh, Vealpiss is really trying to make that up with the um, make that lost damage with those missing cards up with the Murloc synergy. Yeah, there's a lot of directions that the Shaman deck goes. There's Micro Machine, for example. Yeah, there's no true. Power Mace. It's double Cog Master. Yeah, so it's, it's it's like half. It's like a little bit. It's like definitely a Murloc deck with. Um, with some mech <laughs> kind of splashed in there. Pilot Shredder, the Harvest Golem, the w Warlings Appomatic, Micro Machine, Cogmaster. The Bloodlust is kind of interesting. So that feels like he kind of has two finishers in the deck. He has the one Bloodlust and then the any fin. And he's kind of assuming that if I can max my board out and draw either one of these cards, then I can probably just end the game on turn, let's say, five. Because any fin's probably going to cost around five by then, too. Because it's one less for each Murloc, right? So... Who knows? I don't know. Maybe we'll see some craziness. I just hope he plays it. I just want to see the deck, to be honest. Yeah, seems fun. 
And well, when it matches up, though, against uh, his opponent, Firebat, he's bringing Druid, Paladin, Rogue. And Firebat can start off with whatever he feels like is his strongest deck. Oh, sorry, I'm looking at his old decks. Firebats? Yeah, I'm looking yeah. at Firebat's old decks here on the spreadsheet. Oh, Firebat brought a... Maybe that's his old one, too. Yeah, I remember he had a mage in his new one. He had oh, mage, yes. warlock, he had mage, warlock, and hunter. So oh yeah, the hunter was the troll one. So he had mage and warlock would be the main ones that right. he's probably gonna end up starting. I think the mage list is probably the most uh, versatile that he can really bring to start off with, and then um, VOPS will really have to probably attempt to. I mean, he could might he might just start with the shaman deck and try to pull off an early win. Yeah, that, that would be pretty ambitious. I like I like VOPS's druid deck probably the most. Okay, just, I can understand It feels that. the most stable from 1 to 9. I feel like the Warrior deck looks weak on paper, but, I mean, he has Inner Rage, Double Whirlwind, Double Deathbite, and a Patron. So there is, like, a fairly large chance that the game just ends on turn 5. <laughs> like, if you just if you just draw the Patron combo, I doubt could. anything. You know what I mean? Depending on the matchup, of course, like, it could be pretty difficult to deal with. His previous Patron Warrior deck... Was much better though. It I was think. better than this one because he had unstable ghouls. He had fierce monkey. He had, um, I think he had even. A, I, I want to say he had like an Annoyatron. He had like a bunch of these taunt minions, like a sludge Belcher, and he had bolster, two of them, and he also had two patrons, like two whirlwinds, everything, two death bites. It felt like okay, it felt like okay. it lined much better. There was a couple of one ofs that were very. Um, not very, not very Just a little effective. Shaky. Okay. But it was like you know, it definitely looked a lot more clean in terms of the two ofs. The two ofs gives you a lot of consistency. I could definitely see that. Yeah. Overall, both both players' decks and their drafts in, in general seem fairly strong, and it should be a pretty good match. Yeah, maybe uh, we'll see another sure. uh, full three games. Uh, well, in this case, it doesn't really matter if it's two games or three games because uh, for VLPS, he's all in. That's so true. there's no like actual need for betting anymore between Firebat and VLPS because uh, if Firebat just wins two games, then VLPS is out of the tournament. That's true, mm -hmm. but if VLPS manages to wiggle his way back in, he'll be starting round four with 800. True, true, true that. Not too bad. And we'll the, see if that happens. Uh, next round, Annie is 600, so he'll still have at least 200 as well. So, mm -hmm. And after this match, we do have uh, Raynad versus Zelay. And that is not an elimination match yet, but it's very it well could, could be, be for Raynad. Yeah, we'll see because Raynad's at 550, so effectively giving him one bet. Yep. So we just got a uh, just a few minutes left before we s we jump into the betting, and then we'll get right into the game. So let me just get we'll give one more quick shout out to our sponsors. We have Lyft, who has a, a huge pull in the Hearthstone community. Really, really great guys. They're get offering fifty dollars off your first ride. Um, if you use the code eSports, so go ahead and use that code eSports, get $50 off and cruise down to the arena and hang out with all of us lovely gentlemen and ladies. Um, also, we have Cyberpower PC, another huge sponsor for eSports Arena, um, always offering and sponsoring our events with the computers and other great technological advances. And then uh, Gamer Sensei, where you can go find uh, senseis to teach you how to play Hearthstone and other popular video games. So head over to their website directly below in our Twitch banners. Nice. Nailed it. Sell out. Yes, you got it. Well, uh, y y y you're required to. Otherwise, you're fired. <laughs> By who? Are you going to fire me? Can I? Yeah, I don't think so. Ah, well. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. You, you have a lot of power. You got, you got, you got my hopes Twitch up. Chat. You got my hopes up. All right. Looks like, uh, looks like the game's all ready. No need to stall any longer. Let's go into game one and see uh, who between Firebat and VLPS will be able to get the edge. I'm predicting that uh, VLPS will lean towards the Druid. And for Firebat, I actually like the Warlock the, the Warlock. Most. All right. I think Warlock seems to be really reliable for Firebat. Sure, so let's throw it down to our dealer, Wade. All right, Wade, you good. You All right welcome back, guys. We are here for another round three match between VLPS and Firebat. Um, once again, though, VLPS, you are going to be all in um, based on our 450 gold ante. So uh, you're just going to have to match 400 there, Firebat. All right, there we go. All right, so 800 total in the pot. Uh, it's going to be a best of three. Firebat, you're playing with uh, what three classes? Warlock, Hunter, and Mage. And you're going to be on your Warlock for game one. Yeah. And VOPS? Warrior, Druid, and Shaman. And you're going to be on your Warrior. Warrior first. So we do have the Warrior, Warlock, game one. Good luck. Uh, as soon as game one's over, you're welcome to go into game two. Just pick your classes, and uh, good luck. Sweet. Uh, 
Oh. Good luck, my friend. All right. So it looks like they're right there. Tablets are working. Awesome. Technology. <laughs> we'll see uh, if they can even banter a little bit back and forth. I hope so. I feel like these players could have some, uh, some good back and forth uh, banter going on. I like it. Okay, so it is a Warlock versus a Warrior. I was predicting Druid at a VOPS, but you know what? Warrior is the class for VOPS. All right, so we see Siege Engine. He's a golden one, too. What is he doing with the golden Siege Engine? Dude, VOPS has so many gold cards. He loves gold cards. Not as much as Raynad loves gold cards, but he loves gold okay, cards. Who, who doesn't like gold cards? People who don't like gold cards are people who can't <laughs> afford gold cards. You know what? That's very true. Um, as a role player who loves gold cards, I would just like to point out that non-gold cards are for poor people. It's <laughs> <Just> kidding. <laughs> if you weren't fired before, Luke, Am I fired you now? are certainly fired <laughs> now. <laughs> all right, get so, out. Get, all right. <laughs> one. Um, so we have a okay starting hand from VLPS. He has the the ghoul. Um, I mean, it doesn't really do much here. He might actually just coin out the defender. Oh, the fierce yeah, the fierce monkey yeah. sets up for the defender. Uh, yeah, I mean, normally if it's a big threat like a knife juggler, if it's a priority threat, you probably want to take it, take it out. But I think you can you can definitely take your time here. Interesting that he has the only patron in his deck the way to go. in his hand. Of so course. it's like, it ends up being the situation where maybe he can set up that patron for like you're talking about. Yeah, the the king's defender is actually kind of an interesting card. But most people don't. I, I kind of forgot what it did for a second there. Uh, when you play it with a taunt on board, you gain an extra durability. Yeah. So, I feel like he's his deck's very taunt centric, as we can tell. We have uh, Tazdingo yeah. in his hand, uh, as well as Ghoul and Master Jouster, and we do we did see I think one bolster. Yeah, there was a bolster, and you know VLPS he learned his lesson. He said last time when he fielded his I decks, he felt like he wanted to play Warrior, but he was just a little bit too chicken to do it. I think this time he's like, you know what? I know this class, I know these games, I know how to play this style of deck. I'm just gonna stick to my guns. He was trying to be a little bit too advanced, I feel like. Right. And ended up uh, costing him some games where it was like, if he queued up into the Hunter, he should have been able to win it. So, so many taunts. This is gonna be pretty annoying for Firebat to deal with the game kind of like a hard huge wall of taunts. Yeah, and um, you know, Firebat's taking his time. He's playing a more of a control centric warlock because he's got some really good mid range abilities, that, like wasting combo stuff, ran to other things. However, oh, he is giving a lot of initiative to the LPS who can develop Sludge Belcher um, very freely against the board right now. Also, another notable thing that just happened, Firebat just lose Hellfire. Oh, and this right. is, this is going to make it so when VLPS comes out with those patrons in a couple turns, Firebat might not have another answer. Did we see more than one? I think we saw a Shadow Flame, but I'm not sure. I don't even think he, it's going to be that big of an issue. I think the bigger issue is whether or not he's going to get out-tempoed onto the board. Because okay. the patrons only have one way to copy right now, and that's in the stable goal, which the LPS has to you know, develop proactively. And the chances are... Okay, well, there's Death Spy, so I take it all back. But assuming that wasn't drawn, he had Master Joust into War Golem, and you know, if that wasn't dealt with, he might have been able to just kill his opponent. That's true. Now, the, yeah, just dropping that Master Jouster. Oh, wow. never lucky. Yeah. That's, I mean, it's probably it's fine. fine. He doesn't really need the taunt at this point, but I really like just kind of smorking him down. Sure. One, one thing you don't really need to worry about too much in Sealed is Reno Jackson, right? So. Oh, man. A Reno Warlock in this format would you, just be imagine? bonkers. I know. It, it would also be a format that you could hypothetically get away with it because you can construct your deck with a lot of the one of that you pick, open up in packs. Sometimes you get, you know, the one, the one uh, heal bot or like the one far seer, and that's working out okay. Pulling a Reno in this in this format would be insane. Would be cool. Would be cool. Would be cool. Fireback gonna heal up a little bit here, but he still doesn't have an answer to just what's on board. The pressure here. Yeah, luckily enough for Firebat, he actually has Bran heal bot next turn. So as far as health total go, he'll probably be okay. Um, but he does need to find a way to take this board back from Firebat. And it doesn't really look like he has a good way to do that quite yet. Wow. Yeah, I like it. Cute. Just kind of keep the masters as strong as possible. VLPS, two death spites. So he's actually one damage off lethal right now. Yeah, I think he's still good. That's a it. pretty risky play by Firebat. Putting his opponent on not having five damage, which luckily enough he didn't. And it's gonna it might actually save him. It's risky, but he understands he's in an awkward position that he can't really play too defensively, he needs to be much more aggressive onto the board. So I like it. 
Brand Bronzebeard, Heal Bob, puts him back up to 23, and VLPS has to fight back. But he has the Grim Patrons, and it's like you said. Nice. You know, he doesn't he doesn't actually have, have a, a way to deal with yeah. it because he uses Hellfire. I mean, so the second charge of Despite with the Master Jouster will clear not everything, but at least a decent amount, and he can hide the Grim Patron behind the ghoul. Oh, yeah. So that's, an that's another important part, uh, part of this is that it could actually just like multiply the patrons to the point where Fireback can't actually do anything without that, that uh, fire, Hellfire. So maybe we'll see the Shadow Flame, because I think we saw one. Uh, okay. Do you, well, do you remember? I, I, don't I don't recall, but if he does have it, then uh, that's a way, way, one way to fight back. But if he doesn't, VLPS is going to get very far ahead. That's killing this brand. Uh, VLPS is just going to run away unless Firebat has a way he can answer it. Oh, oh he does. Oh, he does. Maybe. If this implosion yeah. rolls two, then Firebat won't be able to clear the board here. Okay. It's time to see just how good Firebat is at uh, so being able to kill off this patron. Because I don't think he has much of a choice. So the implosion, well, the implosion is a two of, two for two out of three, so 66. The bomb lobber is a one out of three, so 33. So it's probably better just to go with the implosion here. Yeah. Oh. oh. We see the up and two pretty stoked about that one. Yeah. And you know what's even worse is that this gets challenged by the... The unstable ghoul. I guess uh, Firebat's not as good at Hearthstone as I thought he was. I know world champion can't even run more than a two. Come well, on. Well, I mean, you know, outside of just being kind of like coy about the situation, that was just the difference between whether or not he can come back on board or not. And with that inner rage draw, I think uh, we're, we can almost put a inner rage put a fork in this one yeah, inner rage and a uh, an acolyte on top of it that's yeah. crazy so he's gonna get two more patrons here draw a card and push 10 damage face well it's uh, he was really close to killing his opponent too he was just a little bit off firebat needs to rip something amazing off the top here right? and if he has a shadow flame now is the time to do it shadow flame last chance does save him you're right because he could heal and then shadow flame Oh. That's not it. Time Killed to tap. Killed the Mechatork. You probably don't want to show anything to your opponent either, so you probably just go with the tap if it's not Shadow Flame. Shadow Flame. Oh. That's not going to help. All right. Well, that's going to do it. VLPS runs away with game number one. And you know that Warrior deck ended up paying off. The lone patron in his deck found a way and uh, ends up being the finisher. I think the real... Uh, MVP is just like being able to have weapons secure the board early oh, on. Yeah. Firebat didn't really have many good curve. He had Voidwalker into tap into other plays like Dark Peddler. That just wasn't really effective for a while. Um, and then as a result, Warrior got to develop very freely. And it just had really beefy stuff. And Warlock had to play super defensive like Hellfire preemptively before the Patriots came out. Yeah, so that's game number one headed over to VLPS, which is going to put him in a pretty decent spot to be able to keep his tournament a his tournament life on alive. I don't. Yes. Yeah, yeah uh, VLPS definitely kicking right now. Uh, he's got Gadget and Jousts to start things off here. I don't mind keeping one by teacher, but I, I think he just really wants to get those two mana minions, and he's, he's a little bit. Uh, regretful of the way that his deck is built right now because he's got a lot of late mid game to late game play right now. Yeah, I believe we saw no innervates but one oh. wild growth. That's huge. The fact that he has an opportunity to play this as a zombie chow. Yeah, and remember, guys, there is there's no need for betting in between the rounds for this current match because VLPS is already all in. So this is an el elimination match of VLPS. He put all of his final 400 chips in. Firebat matched it with his 400. And if the game is won by VLPS, then he goes with 800, staying alive. If Firebat wins, then VLPS will be eliminated from the tournament. Wow, talk about a gang of misfits in Firebat's deck. He's got Flame Waker to yeah. challenge a 4-2. And again, this is kind of the difference between being able to land it as a 2-3 as a versus a a 1-2, uh, because then it'd just be a 3-1, you ping it, take your time, and now all of a sudden, uh, an opportunity for Firebat. To take that board control back. Yeah, because VLPS didn't really draw, and he wants to coin two 5-mana minions back-to-back. -back. Yeah, so we'll probably see just the Ogre Magi come out here, and I think I like Pit, pit Fighter the best here. 
I feel like playing the Lotheb is kind of unnecessary. The Belchers don't contest the Ogre, so Pit Fighter is probably the most board centric minion here. Yeah, very beefy amount, uh, amount of stats there. Five, six trades well into almost everything. Your opponent would have to Fireball in order to gain the tempo. Yeah. It looks like Firebat develops that Gorbashi Berserker, and that card is pretty good in Priest, I mean, in Mage, simply because you can just ping it and immediately gains three attack. So it's essentially, it can be a 5-6 the following turn, which is pretty scary. And you really got to shut that down. VLPS could silence it, but I feel like developing a 5-drop here might be a little bit too strong. Oh, he's actually going to clear it off. Okay. Well, um, yeah, I guess he just feels too threatened by the fact that it, it's kind of like Pit Fighter, except he gets to take this turn to attack in it before he can develop. So I don't mind that play at all. Yeah, a little bit of mech synergy coming out from Firebat here. Yeah, it takes it while he has the opportunity to. And the armor plating probably isn't going to be used here. It doesn't really do too much as far as the board goes. But what does it help him do? Nothing really stays alive longer. I guess what it does do is if he has a second keeper of the grove, this or one swipe. plays around it. Yeah, swipe. It doesn't put it in gear power range, maybe. Um, I mean, I wonder which five drop he's going to opt to play here. I think that one of the Belters is probably the way to go. Again, I feel like that Lothab is so uh, valuable that you really want to play it on a turn where you have board control and really shut down your opponent's option for the AoE. But at the same time, you might need it to take board control back at the same time. So I don't know. Yeah, if he plays Belcher, is he afraid of... Uh, oh, wow. he, he might be afraid of, like, Flame Strike and other cards like that. We do see a Starfall there. Star, Starfire? Uh, Starfire, Starfire there, yeah. It ends Ooh, up being a card that's a little bit slower, uh, but um, he felt like that was the best usage of it. Firebat ends up being able to freeze his pit fire, me giving him a chance to ping over two turns. He uses the Fairy Dragon, that's also fine, because he has Blizzard. Blizzard lets him freeze the board. Now he's going to try to tempo his opponent out of, the, out of the game here. So Mind Control Tech might end up coming in. As you mentioned, this deck looks like it's going to eventually lose the board control, and the Mind Control Tech might be a way for them to take it back. So we might see that coming into play next turn, um, and uh, FieldBS is really just hoping that this Belcher can hold off enough aggression to the point where he'll be able to take over the game with his massive amounts of taunts. Interesting. Well, Firebat draws Flame Strike, which conveniently takes out everything on the first half of the board, and then now he can clean up, push 9 to the face, and Blizzard once again will threaten anything that VLPS puts out. I think VLPS is in big trouble. Because um, now he has to develop two minions. It has to be the mind control deck too. He, he has to play it without getting any value off of it, which is pretty scary. Mm -hmm. And it probably has to be the Belcher as well. Because if we don't play the Belcher here, then yeah, he just dies. So <laughs> Belcher for protection. And he's actually going to hold the mind control deck. VLPS might be thinking that mind control deck is the only way he's coming back in the game. Assuming his opponent develops those like two minions, because most likely one would trade to the Belcher. Right. Which we might see. If he plays that and also develops the spider tank, we might yep. actually see the mind control tech grab some value here. Uh, Firebat might think he's too far ahead to, to play around it, but who knows? Yeah, it, it, it might not be that consequential because if you play mind control tech, you're still not developing taunt, and even if you steal the highest attack minion, there's still 10, min, 10 damage represented on the board. So VLPS, uh, if he plays Volcanic Lumberer... Yeah, I, I, I'm not exactly sure. Looks like uh, the Michael Toltec, unfortunately, wasn't enough. Even though he landed on probably the worst target, I am a little uh, surprised not that, be impactful. that VLP has decided to go with the Mind Control Tech there, like showing the series of Mind Control Tech in his deck rather than just moving on to the next game where he might be playing the same deck again. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, so now Firebat might actually play around in Mind Control Tech the next game. Because there, there was no there was no survivability. Like, you died, even you stole the best minion, you're still dead. So, I don't know. Uh, just one of those more... Uh, no, it's, it's a really good point. The fact that this edge might be a difference between Firebat being cautious of it or just ignore, like never playing around that at all. Yeah, and true. then all of a sudden, uh, you know, you, he's, he's very mindful of it, never gets value. It's just one of those things that more information is really powerful in this kind of thing. And it looks like we're going to be jumping straight into the final game of the series. So the winner, if VLPS wins oh, this, wait, he stays what? alive. And, oh, he played the, whoa, he played the, the Hunter deck. Okay, now keep in mind that Firebat has Dark Scale Healer and Moger's Champion in this Hunter deck. I think he says, I'm just going to rush the Druid down 
and hopefully never draw those cards. Maybe because Fire Fireback could also be afraid of um, his Warlock matchup against the Druid. Yeah. And he probably really wants to avoid that simply because um, it's more of like a mid range you late game. It doesn't want me to get like druided down, I guess you could say, as a lot of the later game Warlocks tend to do. So maybe he just thinks that this matchup is strictly better for him, so he's going to take it while he has. Well, he can. Dude, that is crazy. If we can just see these, some of these late game hunter cards end up having an impact, I'll be thoroughly impressed. I just want to see Ball of Spiders. That's all I really want to see. <laughs> the rest of the card. It is pretty fine. scary. Let me let me warn you before it actually happens. It's scary. I've oh, never it's actually, I don't think I've ever seen the card played. Super spooky. So there's the mind control tech coming out from VLPS. Just kind of grab, throwing it down for tempo. He does have the healing touch, which is something I don't think we talked about in VLPS's list. Um, it could end up helping in this matchup specifically. Hmm, yeah, you're right. Um, the healing touch might end up being a reason why he ends up surviving. Firebat plays defensive and ends up using Huffer to trade into the mind control tech. I feel like, if, especially after seeing a lot of VLPS's deck, which is like the double belcher, like all these taunts and late game cards, I feel like Firebat might want to take the more aggressive, aggressive uh, approach and kind of end the game before it gets to that point, but he doesn't want to give VLPS an option to um, get a two for one with his with the value trade, so. Jungle Panther over the Wolf Rider as well. So yeah, Firebat's going for late game for sure. Yeah, the Jungle Panther just feels like it's more steady board control. That's why he went for the trade with Huffer. He says, I'm not going to win by racing you. I'm going to win by establishing board presence. But board presence is what VLPS has in spades. Yeah, we see a Druid of the Claw coming down. And the Druid of the Claw on 5 is, is pretty detrimental to Firebat here as he doesn't have a, a clean way through it. He can power shot... It's two damage, right? It's, yeah, it's a little bit uneven. So I think the Ginia Zephyrs feels a little bit better. But it's funny because when I, that's why we were looking at this deck. What does Ginia Zephyrs even benefit off from Hunter? I think he just put it in there as a, as a body for five because I don't think he had a lot of strong five drops or he put all of his strong five drops like his Belters and such in his other decks, which kind of left a void in his in his curve. So we just kind of threw him in there because of their stats, I would assume, at least. Um, I can't really think of any buff cards that... They have as in like beast centric ones. Okay, well, let's see if that ends up being uh, something that ends up rewarding or hurting him. Because right now, Firebat has Stone Toes Boar as one of his only board control tools. Well, we could see Power Shot Stone Toes Boar here actually with like a hero power and clean up the majority of the board, leaving just the 2 1 zombie chip. <laughs> okay, well. Looks like we're going to see two Stone Toes Boars and a Power Shot to really clean this board up here. <laughs> Maybe you don't even play the other one. Maybe you actually whittle into gear power, power because the yeah. two damage you take from the zombie chow is pretty relevant. <sighs> I like Sorry, it. I like it's it. funny because Tarbat had one of these moments back in 2014 before he became the world champion um, where he played Stone Tusk Boar in a Miracle Road deck. And I'm just having flashbacks to that very moment because. A lot of people were running South Sea deck at, at the time, and he chose to run Stone Toes Boar, and a lot of us were very confused because it felt like it was a worse version. But he was trying to convince us for a long time that it was actually good. How did it go? Not well? <laughs> uh, he ended up... Uh, I think he ended up Shadow Stepping the Boar for like one damage or something. It was so funny. It was like the most ridiculous scenario. What a hero. Yeah. Oh, that's a pretty good card to draw on turn eight. Yeah, I mean, you can also Starfire and remove. I feel like this might be one of the best chances to use it. Even though you do give us something for health, you do have a very secure board by having that 5-5. Five five. That is very true. Um, I don't think VLP is really worried about his health total too much, especially with that healing touch in hand. So he's probably okay with using his health as a resource here and really just removing everything Firebat has since uh, Firebat's really running pretty low on cards. Yeah, I mean, Drew is on... Eight mana at this point. He could pretty much run anything at once. So I think he feels like he can take it take his time. BLPS picks up Mech Bear Cat, also a pretty nasty minion to uh to, to like deal with as the hunter. All those spare parts are can be really powerful, Rusty Horn being one of them, or um if if, if you want it to gain some extra attack with extra damage. So we go, he go ahead and develops the uh, Mounted Raptor there over using the Healing Touch. 
Looks like he's not going to be playing around like a double kill command type of scenario or anything like that, which obviously is pretty rare, but it could actually end up happening. Yeah. Oh, no, he ran out oh, of mana. Man. Not no. with mana. Well, he might have a kill command now. He's looking for extra damage. I bet he wishes he had the same discover as he did last time, which was Arcane Golem, Wolf Rider. Oh, yeah. And the Panther here. Okay, Panther is delayed damage. It's stealth. That's true. So this and he's healing close. Touch. This healing touch is going to put him... Put him kind of in a rough spot, I think. Oh, yeah. Now that he has um, Bomb Lobber. He can Healing Touch, Bomb Lobber, Hero Power. And clear yeah. up the whole board. And, doesn't that, and then that way, the, the uh, what's it called? The Emperor Cobra doesn't actually challenge 7-6. Oh, that's so backbreaking for Firebat. Yeah, Firebat, you can see his face there. I'm just seeing the Healing Touch. It's, that's really rough. It's, Oh, and he got the boar. Look at this. Dude. Oh, who has the boar control now, Firebat? It's like a dream come true. Oh, wait. wait he didn't attack with the boar. Wow. Oh, God. He, he, he ended his turn too I fast. Was he was thinking like, ah, yeah, there's no I one drop I can charge. attack with. But he forgot the biggest threat of all lurking behind the mountain raptor. And it looks like that's going to be it. He is lethal on board. So this is going to be VLPS's elimination match. And he survives. Yeah. He's on to round four. Had to check it in, man. Gamble paid off. VLPS said, you know what? I want to just... Because you know what, he ended up folding the previous match, and a yeah, lot of people questioned his strategy, saying, "What are you doing, Victor? You know, like, why did you just fold twice against the lane?" He said, "You know what, I want to conserve my my chips, go in for round number three, and just draft well and focus all my energy to winning." And when he did, he's doubling up, and now he's in a pretty like he's in a much better position than he was uh, just the previous round by being at 800. That gives him some room to bet and also be able to make the ante. Yeah, some great games from both sides there. But we're going to go and throw it down to our dealer Wade for a quick post-game interview. Pre-game interview. Post-game post, post -game interview. All right, so congratulations, VLPS. Nailed Still it. in the tournament. Pull out yep. the, the close game three. Um, saw that bomb lobber. Will you take a sigh, a sigh of relief? Pretty happy. I mean, it... Uh it allowed me to set up for lethal the following turn, whereas if I didn't top deck it, I could still play the, the pit fighter on curve, but uh, I wouldn't have been able to uh, swing the, the seven damage to face. So it was, it was a nice top deck. I'm, I'm more so happy that I had the healing touch in my hand. I don't think if I had the healing touch, I could have, you know, I, it could have been close there. What was your thoughts on the series, Firebat? Yeah, it was a pretty close series. Not sure if Hunter was the right pick. If I would have known he had healing touch in his druid, it probably would have went Warlock. So he got me with the tech card there. All right, all right. Well, uh, here's the uh, the chips for you right there. Thank you, sir. Still in the tournament. Uh, still got plenty of chips, uh, Firebat, to uh, continue going on in this next round. So uh, good luck in, in your next matches and everything. Thanks. Thanks. Nice post-game interviews. Uh, TJ is joined with me. He actually decided to fire Luke on the spot and take his spot. I don't uh, have that kind of authority. Congratulations new job, TJ. Oh, thank you. I am now the new Shimonahi. <laughs> Very much so. Uh, you know, I, I really like what VLPS has been able to bring it back uh, for round number three. So it ends up paying off, and he's alive. Uh, I actually kind of want to take a look at the standings of the... The, the gold and where everyone sits because I believe VLPS has netted 400 so he's back at 800 and Firebat drops to uh, 600. 600 I believe. Yeah. Um, so you know kind of equalizing playing field Firebat will have enough to make the ante next round but I guess that makes the strategy very simple just win the best uh, two out of three. <laughs>